I've seen some leaders say, all right, now my role is more externally facing or now my role is more cross-functional. So who are the key people or the key groups that I really have to connect to in some more profound and personal way in order to do what I need to do? They'll say, okay, these two people, I gotta see them once a month over dinner. These people, I need to have a coffee with them maybe a few times a year. You know, these people are, you know, I just got to keep after them a little bit more frequently. And then they measure themselves. How am I doing? Have I done what I set out to do? Managers need three different kinds of networks. The first of them is your operational network. The second one I call your personal network. The third network, which I call the strategic network, is the one that most managers don't even know it exists or, 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 or just really don't pay that much attention to. And this is a network that is very much tied to your contributions and your value added in the organization, but on the strategic dimension. This network is really more of a mix of internal and external relationships that can keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening. It brings you things that you weren't even looking for because you're talking to people and when things happen, you find out about it. And it helps you and also puts you in a position to connect the dots. What got you here won't even keep you here. We get so vulnerable to what I call competency traps. You like it, you do it more, you get more practice, you do it better, you like it even more. We even start to um, filter our networks in terms of people who value the same things we value. The implications of that are that we constantly need to work on some of the things that don't come as naturally. And every senior manager I talk to would like to allocate more time to strategic concerns. It's about being able to see what's happening in the world and then see how that connects to what you're doing in your group and in your organization. The only way to be more strategic is to connect outside the organization. When you look at most organizations, they tend to have a lot of women that come in at the entry level, and then something starts to happen around the middle level of the organization. The research shows pretty clearly that it isn't about any kind of overt discrimination, and most of the time it isn't either about women not wanting those roles and not wanting to do it. What it's about is something that's quite subtle and hard to explain. We call it second generation bias. You can unpack it in three different boxes. And by the time you get to the middle level, women are found statistically disproportionately in staff roles. The second bit has to do with who helps you and who helps you to get into those roles. And what we've been seeing pretty clearly in the research is that women have lots of mentors, but those mentors are not sponsoring them into those key roles. The third category of things that really play into this is has to do with stereotypes and our stereotypes about what leaders look like, what they walk like, what they talk like, the real image of the leader in this organization, which of course has been colored by generations of successful leaders in the past who have been primarily male. But there comes a time when reflecting on the past isn't necessarily going to get you to where you want to go in the future. I often encourage them to try to get as much outsight, outsight rather than insight on themselves as possible by doing things that are outside the usual, that they haven't done before, that take them outside their past trajectory and allow them to imagine other opportunities.